Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome to the 20th video of the Vida Online Arena. It's your host Colin Heim with the black pieces again from the Rapid Time Control. Welcome Yes Virgin Adams Chess. If you've selected this video, you are here to see a virtual instructional brought to you by myself as again as per usual, Colin Heim. Let's get right into it folks. E4, C5. Hope everyone's having a nice little holiday season here in the, in the VI and elsewhere. So let's go for the old Sicilian yet again. And D2, D4. Okay. So uh, typically, guys, for my beginners or intermediates, usually we will see C takes on D4. And after Knight takes D4, we go for this, uh, we call the anti Burgovian Shvesnikov. Right, the Shvesnikov. So. E5 and attacking that knight now on d4 that it recaptured. And I've been running a nice little test on this Sicilian with a6. And after a knight to d6 check, there's another video on the playlist. It's exactly like this. And after bishop into d6 and queen captures, recapturing the minor piece after the check, queen e7 and my opponent played queen e7 and knight g to e7. And then, uh, here's where my opponent made the first mistake in this game, guys. So, knight to c3. Uh, part of the title of this video is, is don't play c3 uh, after this. Okay. So here we go, guys. On with the instructional. Knight to b4 now. Attacking c2 pawn. And threatening a check. Picking up the a1 rook. So, king to d2. And d5. So fad this. So so far, this doesn't look really uh, too bad for black. White looks kind of out of position here. <laughs> Both bishops, as we see, are undeveloped. Yes, white has the bishop pair. As I gave up the dark squared bishop in the opening uh, on move six. So here we go, guys. A3 now attacking my knight and. Find the best move for black in this position. I know I always ask this, and it's kind of tricky at times, uh, everyone, but nonetheless, find the best move for black. Okay, the best move for black is just now pushing d4. That was played in the game, yes. So my opponent captured a into b4, and then I captured his knight, right, with the black center pawn. And then he recaptured my black center pawn uh, with his b pawn. So now white has double pawns on the c file. Okay, so we saw short castles there now by myself, guys, your instructor, conducting black. And bishop to c4. Bishop to c4 is okay. Uh, rook swings over to d8 now with a check. Check to the white king, guys. Where should, where should the white king go in this position? Well, e2 was the least recommended square, I believe. Oh, no, it's not that bad. Okay, so any, any uh, square on the e-file there for the king. So... Uh, black has castled in this position, and white has lost castling privileges here in the opening. So now, guys, in this position, if you found b5, that's actually the best move now. Uh, no lie. Making the bishop drop back to b3 now. Knight to g6 is a great move. g3, prophylaxis. King h8. And now, can you guys find the move that I uh, wanted my opponent to play in this position? And yes, played it anyway, not really knowing the consequences. Well, it was best just to play bishop um, bishop to d5, attacking the rook on a8. Now the rook is forced to move. Right, so we didn't see that in the game. Instead, we saw my opponent capture on f7, and this is what I wanted. Can you guys figure out why this was what your instructor wanted in this online game? Okay, rook to f8, and now after bishop captures, yes. Bishop g4 check is very, very nice. Now let's say if, uh, you know, king goes to one of these least recommended squares, right, guys? A rook is coming here, and that's a check. And, uh, yeah, it's starting to look real, real bad here for, for white. It's going to be a f3 check, backs up again, and white is in serious danger. <laughs> so, capturing... The bishop that went for my knight. Right, guys, so after bishop captures, not immediately recapturing that g6 bishop now, just throwing a check. King moves forward to e3, and yes, 
H7 into G6. Excellent, guys. Way to follow along, guys. Good job. So bishop e2 now was the continuation, and we have this rook bishop endgame. Rook to f3 check, king drops back to e2. And now, if you found this discovered check, guys, this is a great move, right? The king is what we call discovered check now from the uh, black bishop on g4 square. So the king decides to drop back to e1, and after rook captures on c2, and we see bishop capturing on uh, e5, guys, find the best move now for black in this position. For my beginners, my intermediates, um, even my experts, whoever's watching this, my youths find the best move for black. Well, the best move here is, is uh, rook e2 check. And after the king moved to f1, now you're just picking up another pawn. And yeah, after yeah any move here, uh, maybe just rook b1 was best. I guess rook b1 was best. Oh, obviously it wasn't, guys, right, because the bishop drops. Okay, so that's why he moved the bishop. And now b4 pawn is dropping. And... In this position, guys, black has two connected passer pawns here, what we call on the queen side, okay? So two connected pass pawns here. One of them is surely going to queen uh, after, after this nice little tactic. So here's rook to d4, guys, and uh, bishop to e3, obviously attacking the uh, rook. But now forcing an exchange of rooks now as I have my bishop planted nicely on f3 and after rook captures and now bishop captures and... King attacks that black bishop, dropping back. Bishop to f3 was a real uh, sadistic move because it doesn't allow any progress through with the f-pawn and never allows the rook to go to a white square as the king is, is blocking. So my opponent played the best move in this position, which is king to d2. All credit. That's that's really nice. But as we mentioned, guys, these, these pawns here on the queen side are deadly. So start pushing uh, in this position, everyone. Uh, b5, b4, let's pay attention to the instructions now. Rook b1, a5, and bishop to b6. Okay, so uh, in this position, my opponent, after I played, um, yeah, rookie, rookie 4 and then uh, forcing the rook to move to a dark square, the opponent had a long think here after rook to a6. I believe, let's get into some virtual analysis now, guys. I believe he thought about capturing here. And then after captures, captures, and uh, this this would be the uh, continuation here, right? This is what's going on. Well, I would I would much rather play with black here, as black has a bishop for uh, a pawn, and I think it's safe to say that black could easily win this endgame. I really do. Even though there's double pawns here on the G file, these these pawns are all falling here on the king's side with the help of that bishop and that rook on the second rank. So none of that was played in the game, although my opponent here from Peru had a very, very long think and ended up just dropping his bishop back to c7 square. Okay. So continuing on, bishop to d5, king to d3, b3 now, that was why uh, bishop to d5 was played here, guys, just to uh, back up the pawn that's about to move up the queen side. So b3, just non-progressive moves here from my opponent. There's really not much to do here, guys. The rook is overloaded here. This rook is overloaded because there's two pass pawns that are connected. And after moving the king to try and maybe create some attack here, rook captures. Guys, find the best move for black now after uh, rook captures on b3. Well, if if you guys consider it a move like a2, that's really not correct. <laughs> maybe, it, maybe it is correct. I'm not sure. After uh, check and here. And, uh, yeah, maybe. Anyway, your, your opponent is keeping the rook, but losing the bishop. So it's kind of like that same story, everyone. Like what we talked about, if he, if, if he would have gone for that bishop sacrifice on a3... Same story there. We didn't see that in the game. Obviously, just do the right thing, obvious or not. And the right thing is to capture on b3. So capture on b3. <laughs> okay, moving on. So let's win this endgame now uh, with Team Black. Okay? 
a3, a2, king, and a1 equals queen, and bishop captures, and rook captures, and now we have this endgame where uh, black has uh, a rook for a pawn. So black is plus four here. It sh should be very easily uh, convertible. In other words, it should be very easily winnable, guys. Okay. So king to g3 now, and king f6, and h4 now going after g5 pawn captures. And now guys, find the best move for black. Maybe this is kind of hard to spot at first. But find the best move for black. Did you guys pick up the g-pawn and go for g5? Yeah, that's best. King is supposed to go backwards. And then there's supposed to be a little dance here. King has to move over there, over here. Right? Going back, up here. And it's lost. For white. But instead we saw king h5 and rook to f4 and we can stop here. Uh, yeah, the f pawn is falling. And uh, that's going to be all she wrote. So, that was the end of that old Sicilian. Uh, brought to you guys by myself. My own personal game. I share in this playlist with you guys. To gain some instruction and improve on our chess abilities. Okay. So again... Guys, how to be technically savvy with black when you decide to go for a Sicilian and give up this dark squared bishop in exchange just for a kingside knight. And now, if your opponent plays a move like c3 in this position, you know what to do. Because c3 obviously is not the best move. The best move in the position is probably just something like bishop to g5. And after f6, dropping back, maybe now start pushing. There really is no need to castle in this position, so maybe, uh, yeah, not castling, but just going for d5 is best. And then now after something like knight to b2 and then castles, so these are all better ways. Uh, <laughs> none of this was played, but this is what should be played, guys, okay? So th this would be like a real high-level game here in this position. I want to thank everyone for watching and participating as always, as per usual, uh, guys and girls. Many more to come in the future, I'm very sure of that. And everyone take care. Should have got something out of this lesson today, this whole Sicilian defense, Virgin Islands chess, online virtual tutorials. Thank you very much guys and have a lovely time. See everyone on the other side.